Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Michael. Welcome back to IDB. In this video, we're going over every single new change in iOS 16. So iOS 16 is finally out of beta and it's now available to everybody. So you can go ahead and update your iPhone right now and follow along with us in this video as we're gonna show you every single new feature and change. Let's go ahead right now and jump in. So to get things started, inside accessibility settings, there is a new feature called Apple Watch Mirroring. And if you turn this on, you're able to see what is on your Apple Watch. And from your iPhone, you are able to control your Apple Watch as well. There's a new feature called Live Captions, which is able to add captions to pretty much anything playing out of your iPhone. And this also works in FaceTime as well. Inside the Magnifier app, if you click on the settings icon on the bottom left, you can now change the controls inside the Magnifier. And also inside the Magnifier app, if you have an iPad or an iPhone with a LiDAR scanner, the app is now able to do certain detection modes so it can detect things like doors and people and can also give you a description of your surroundings. Staying inside of accessibility settings, if you are someone who uses sound recognition, the iPhone is now capable of recognizing the sound of a train. And also if you use voice control, you're now able to end a phone call just by saying hang up into your iPhone. And we also have some changes inside the wallet app as well. So for those of you who are in the United States, there's a new feature from Apple called Apple Pay Later, where any purchase you make with Apple Pay is able to be split among four equal payments with no interest. There's also a new feature inside wallet called key sharing. So if you have the key to a car or a hotel room inside your wallet app, you're now able to securely share that with any other iPhone user. And then as you can see at the top right of the wallet app, there is a new orders button and any order you make on the web with Apple Pay is gonna show up here and you can also track the progress of your order as well. And another very small change in the wallet app, if you are a user of the Apple card and you use the daily cash feature, you're able to see more info about daily cash such as the latest daily bonus and also how much lifetime daily cash you have received. Inside the Books app, we now have themes. So when you're reading something, all you have to do is tap on the screen to reveal the controls. And then you can see this little button here at the bottom right. If you click on this, you can see we have themes and settings. And if you choose this, you can see we have original, quiet, paper, bold, calm, and focus. So a whole bunch of themes to choose from when reading your book. And also for those of you who use audiobooks, the now playing screen for audiobooks has been completely redesigned as you can see here. And we also have a whole bunch of changes for camera and photos. So first off inside photos, we now have the option to view duplicate photos. So if we click here, as you can see, the iPhone has detected a whole bunch of photos in my library that are duplicates. And I have the option to merge all these photos if I want to. You can also see that our hidden and recently deleted albums are now locked. And if you want to view these albums, you have to enter your iPhone passcode or use face ID. And when you're viewing a photo, as you can see, the UI has been changed up a little bit. So we now have a menu button here at the top right for quick actions. This is a lot faster and a lot better than iOS 15. And when you are editing a photo, you now have the option to copy and paste photo edits to apply to different photos. So as you can see here, I've made a few changes to this photo. And then after I finish editing, if I click on this menu button, I'm able to copy edits as you can see right here. If I click on copy edits and then go to another photo, I'm able to paste those edits to make the exact same change to a different photo. And iOS 16 also supports something really cool called iCloud Shared Photo Library. So you can choose specific photos to share with friends or family, or you can choose to share your entire photo library as it is. You'll also have a toggle inside the camera app. For whatever reason, I can't get it working on my iPhone. But if you have shared iCloud photo library set up, you will have a toggle in your camera app that allows you to choose which album you want to save your photo to when you take it. And it also goes one step further. If your iPhone detects that you are in the vicinity of members of that iCloud shared photo library, it'll turn that toggle on automatically for you. And iOS 16 also supports emoji input with dictation. Smiling emoji. And if you are someone who uses Memoji stickers inside of iMessage, we have a whole bunch of new poses for your character right here. And another new feature for FaceTime is handoff in FaceTime. So if you are in a FaceTime call and then you arrive home, you're able to seamlessly transfer that FaceTime call to your iPad or your Mac. And it will also transfer the audio connection of your headphones as well. 
The fitness app is now installed by default on iOS 16 as it doesn't require an Apple Watch now to close your move ring. So to get the exercise and the stand ring, you do need an Apple Watch. But now if you don't have an Apple Watch, you're able to set up a move goal and try to close that ring every single day. So this is good if you don't have an Apple Watch yet, but you still want to be active. It's going to use the sensors on your iPhone and track your overall steps and movement to close that ring. Inside the health app, there's an all new section here called medications, and you're able to add various medications using the camera on your iPhone. All you have to do is scan your pill bottle and it's gonna add it into the health app. You can also set up a schedule and get reminders to take your pills. So this is gonna help a lot of people. The home app has been completely redesigned and is now a lot easier to use. And one thing I noticed is the home app is now a lot more visually appealing, even if you don't have that many smart home accessories. And you can also see we have a whole bunch of new wallpapers for the home app as well. Dictation has also been improved in iOS 16. And as you can see, it is adding punctuation for me. This is a really cool feature and I can also jump right to the keyboard and make any edits I want while Dictation is still running. Another one here for the keyboard, inside of settings, if you click on sounds and haptics and then click on keyboard feedback, you can now choose to have haptic feedback when you're typing on the keyboard. This feels really good with the Taptic engine inside the iPhone. So you may remember last year with iOS 15, Apple brought live text, which was a pretty popular feature. And they have expanded on live text now with translation and conversion in iOS 16. So I have some French writing here in this notebook and if I hold it up to my iPhone's camera, as you can see right there, it's going to detect it. And if I click this button on the bottom right, as you can see, it has detected that that is another language. I can now click on the translate button here on the bottom left. And as you can see, it translates it just like that. And this also works beyond just doing translations as well. It can also do various conversions from currency or measurements. So if I hold up a measurement in inches, I can get that converted into whatever I want. I can also do various conversions in currency. So if I hold up in front of my camera something in euros, I can get that converted into dollars if I want. And if you're watching a video using the default player in iOS 16, you now have live text in video as well. So if you pause the video, all you have to do is press and hold on the text you want to select and you can choose to select it and copy it just like that. So now we're going to talk about the lock screen. This is probably the feature that most of you were waiting for. And this may be quite a long section of the video as Apple has made quite a few changes to the lock screen in iOS 16. So we're going to start with all the assets at the top of the lock screen and then work our way down. So if we press and hold on our lock screen, as you can see, we have a new view here. To add a new wallpaper or lock screen, all you have to do is click on the plus. I'll show you that later. But for now, we're going to click on customize. So starting at the top, if you click where the date is, you have the option to add a thin widget. So you can have things such as sunset time, your calendar, clock, fitness, and you can scroll through these and see which one you want to put there. And if you click on the clock, you're able to choose from eight different fonts. So when you first install iOS 16, this is the default one, but you can choose from any font you want down here. And as you can see, you can also change the color of all of this detail as well. So this is kind of a transparent color that matches with your wallpaper, or you can choose any color you want at the bottom. And here just below the time, as you can see, we're able to add widgets. So if I click on this, this is the widget gallery. So not many widgets right now are supported by third party apps. And once developers update their apps for iOS 16, you're going to see a lot more widgets for the lock screen. But usually the widgets that I use on my iPhone are the batteries widgets for my iPhone and the Apple Watch. And I usually add the temperature as well. And something to keep in mind when you're using widgets, the depth effect that you get over the clock is going to disappear as soon as you add a widget. However, if you're not a fan of this depth effect, you're able to click on the menu button at the bottom right and you can turn it off just like that. So once you have added all of your widgets and made all of your customizations to your lock screen, you can click on done and you will have a few more options to choose from. So you can choose to set this as your wallpaper as is. If you click on customize home screen, however, you will get a few different options. So I usually add a blur to my home screen wallpaper. It just makes it look a little bit cleaner with all of the widgets and app icons on my home screen. So to do this, all you have to do is click on blur right here. And as you can see, it adds a pretty nice Gaussian blur right to my home screen wallpaper. You can also choose a color for the home screen. So if I click on customize home screen again, as you can see, I can pick a certain color if I want, or I can also choose a gradient for the background. And if you want to add a new wallpaper or lock screen, as I said before, all you have to do is click the plus icon on the bottom right. And you can also do this from settings as well. 
So if I click this here, this pulls up the all new wallpaper picker UI. And within this, I'm able to show you all of the new default wallpapers inside of iOS 16. So Apple has added a whole bunch of these and I'm gonna go over every single one with you. So this first one is weather. This one is pretty cool. This is a live representation of what the weather is like in your current location. I usually find this looks the best when it's raining or a thunderstorm outside as you get some pretty cool animations to go along with the lock screen. We also have this one which is called astronomy and you have a few different versions of this. So you have earth detail and then you can zoom out a little bit and see the entire earth. And you also have the moon and you have moon detail and you also have the solar system as well. And also a fun Easter egg is this is actually the current location of all of the planets in the solar system. We also have a new wallpaper called emoji. Now I had a lot of fun with this in the beta. I made about 10 of these wallpapers based on emojis and you can change which emojis are in the wallpaper and the background. You can go crazy with this. So if I click the emoji icon, I'm able to change which ones I see. So let's just have some fun and make this one, this one, and this one. And we're gonna change the background color. So we'll click the menu icon and let's change the background color to a nice blue. And then I don't like the way the emojis are laid out. So all I have to do is swipe and I can find a different layout. We also have a really cool spiral option. So I think I'm gonna go with this one right here. That looks pretty cool. So you can mess around with this and you can have uh, any kind of emoji as your wallpaper and you can choose to set it on your lock screen and your home screen as well. There's also a new wallpaper called Unity, which looks pretty cool. And if you set this as your wallpaper, you get a pretty cool animation when unlocking your phone, as you can see here. We also have a very simple wallpaper simply called the color. So in the bottom left corner, you can choose whatever color you want and then you can choose whichever style you want that color to be in. And Apple has also added an all new pride wallpaper as well. And when you set this as your wallpaper, you get a really cool animation as you can see here. And the last default wallpaper that Apple has added in iOS 16 is kind of an Easter egg and it's kind of a throwback to the original iPhone. So you can see here, Apple has added a clownfish wallpaper. And if you don't know, this is the wallpaper or it's a similar wallpaper to what was on the original iPhone when Steve Jobs unveiled the first ever iPhone. So if you wanna have a cool retro look on your iPhone, you can set this clownfish wallpaper and it also has a really cool depth effect with the bubbles and the time as you can see there. And also inside of the wallpaper picker, if you click on the photos icon on the top left, you can see that your iPhone has automatically sorted your photos based on what it thinks will make for a good looking wallpaper. So we have this featured section. We also have sorting by people, nature and cities as well. So if we go and select a wallpaper, let's say this one here at the bottom right, the first thing you're gonna notice is the iPhone is gonna do the best it can to try to cut out an object from the background and apply that cool depth effect to the clock. You can see here with this building, it did a really good job. And we can also swipe to get different filter options as well. And along with these filters, you can see it's changing the font on the clock too. And we're gonna talk about focus modes a little bit later in this video, but since we're talking about wallpapers right now, if you want a certain wallpaper to be set as soon as you enter a focus mode, all you have to do is click the button down here and choose which focus mode you wanna to link to that wallpaper iOS 16 also brings a new feature called live activities, which is a live updating notification, which is going to live at the very bottom of your lock screen. So developers have to update their applications to work with iOS 16, and they also have to turn on support for live activities. But this can be really useful if you're tracking the score in a game or if you're tracking a food delivery, for example. I don't have any uh, examples to show you in this video except for one. So if you open up the clock app and you start a timer, you're actually able to see the live activity of that timer right at the bottom of your lock screen. So this is just a really small preview of what live activities are going to look like at the bottom of your lock screen on iOS 16. Of course, like I said before, it's all dependent on developers. So it's going to be really cool once we get all of our apps updated to support live activities. Just imagine having Google Maps at the bottom of your lock screen as a live activity. So now for some changes to the music app and the now playing UI. As you can see here inside the music app, there are no more handles or grabbers for the scrubber and the volume control. It just makes it look a little bit cleaner. And also when you're playing something on the lock screen, as you can see, there is a new now playing UI with a pretty cool audio visualizer on the top right. Also, if you click on the album art, you're able to get a full screen UI of your now playing music. And also something really small when using your playback controls, you get a pretty cool animation when you're clicking these buttons. 
So we also have a change to notifications and how they look on the lock screen. So if I go to my lock screen and I swipe up, as you can see, notifications now live at the very bottom of the screen. And when you get a new notification, instead of coming from under the clock as they did in iOS 15, they're going to appear at the bottom of the screen, just like the live activities. And also something new for notification settings is you can change the way notifications look on the lock screen. So the default view is a stack just like this. As you can see, one notification is stacked on top of another. You can also choose to have a count where it's just going to show the numerical value of how many notifications you have. And you can also choose to have a list as well where it doesn't stack them. Spotlight search is also a lot better on the home screen now. So inside settings, if you click on home screen, make sure that search is turned on for the home screen right here. And then all you have to do to access spotlight is just tap on this pill. It's a lot easier than swiping down. So we also have some really nice changes inside of mail as well. So the first one, when you go ahead and send an email, you now have the option to undo that sent email. So if I click on send right here and then go back to my inbox, as you can see, there's an undo send button right there. And if I click on that, it's not going to send that email. It's going to pull up the draft all over again. You also have the option to schedule an email. So instead of clicking the send button, all you have to do is press and hold on the send button. And then you have options to schedule that email. The mail app also now supports follow up reminders. So if you send an email to someone and then you don't receive a response, when you open up the mail app, your iPhone may prompt you to follow up to that email. And Apple has also said that search inside of mail is a lot better this year. So it'll automatically fix typos for you if you spelled something wrong. That was a huge issue in the mail app in iOS 15. And they also say that the results are going to appear a lot faster. So overall, if you're searching for something inside of mail, it's going to work a lot better in iOS 16. We also have a few changes inside the Maps app as well. So you're now able to see how much a transit fare is going to cost you if you're using public transit. You're also able to add your transit card right into the Wallet app. And also, if the balance of your transit card is getting low, you're able to top up your balance right from your iPhone. And also another feature which is highly requested and is finally here in iOS 16, you can now add multiple stops to your driving route inside of Maps. Google Maps has had this for it feels like a decade and it is finally here on Apple Maps. And we also have a whole bunch of new awesome changes inside of the messages application. So the first one is you can now mark a message as unread. So this is really useful if you get a message and you read it, but you just want to be reminded about that message later. All you have to do is now swipe from the left to the right on a message and click on unread. And another really great feature in iOS 16 messages is you can now get back a message that you deleted. So if you click on the edit button at the top left, you're able to show recently deleted messages. And you also have the option to now undo a sent iMessage and edit a sent iMessage as well. So if I send hi and I click on send, I can press and hold on that bubble and then click on undo send. And as you can see, it completely removes that message. You only have two minutes to do this. And that also applies for editing a message as well. So I'll go ahead and purposefully misspell a word and then click on send. And then I'll notice I misspelled it. So I'm going to press and hold on it and then click on edit. And then I can fix the spelling of that word. So I'll fix that to hello and then I'll click the check mark. And then as you can see, I have edited that message. Uh, keep in mind that the recipient of this message is going to be able to click on that text where it says edited and they can see the history of edits made to that message. And another great feature that is coming to messages in iOS 16 is SharePlay over iMessage. So SharePlay is a great feature. However, I really didn't use it because I don't want to be on a FaceTime call with somebody while watching a show. I would much rather just text them about the show. And you can now do this in iOS 16 with SharePlay over iMessage. So the show is still going to be synced up on both devices. And if someone pauses it, it's also going to pause it on that other device. But now you don't have to be on an annoying FaceTime call the entire time. You can just be texting back and forth about the show. So to do this, all you have to do is pick a show that is compatible with SharePlay, click on the share icon. And right from here, you're able to start a SharePlay session over iMessage. Another new feature is inside the news app and the news app now completely supports all sports. So for me, I'm a hockey fan. So here is the page for NHL. So before in the news app, you'd really only get articles about sports, but now you can see scores and standings and various stats, and you can choose to follow any team you want inside the news app right here. So this is a huge improvement. Also inside the news app, there's a new feature where it's going to show more local news based on your location on the home page. And I have noticed this whenever I open up the news app in iOS 16, sometimes the main story on the front page is more related to my local area. 
We also have a new feature for Quick Notes. So this is Safari and I click the share sheet to share a website. You can see we now have a new button here to add to a Quick Note. So if I wanna add the link to this website to a Quick Note, all I have to do is click this and it creates an all new note for me right here. Inside the Notes app, we also have an option for a smart folder. So a smart folder is going to put certain notes into that folder depending on various filters that you set here. So you can choose notes that contain a certain tag or after a certain date or certain mentions of various people. You can have all of these different filters for your smart folders. So a lot more options in terms of organization inside of Notes. And also something else that's new inside of notes is for all of your locked notes is you no longer have a separate password for your notes and your iPhone as your locked notes are now going to use the exact same password that you use to unlock your iPhone, meaning that your notes are now end to end encrypted as well. And we also have a whole bunch of new privacy and security options inside of iOS 16. So as you can see, we have safety check, and this says if circumstances or trust levels change, safety check allows you to disconnect from people, apps, and devices you no longer want to be connected to. So this is pretty nice. And we also have an option here for emergency reset. So immediately reset access for all people who have access to your account. And you also have more granularity here at the bottom. You can control exactly what people have access to your account and what access they can view. And staying inside of privacy and security settings, if you scroll all the way down, there is a lockdown mode right here. Now lockdown mode, it says, is an extreme optional protection that should only be used if you believe that you are going to be personally attacked. So I could see people in government positions using this. Uh, there's nothing really that serious on my phone where I would need to use a lockdown mode, but it is nice that it's here. We also have some really nice updates inside of Reminders. So starting off with the Today tab, we now have some organization here based on morning, afternoon, and nighttime. So this doesn't really add anything, it just kind of gives you a place to tap if you want to quickly add a reminder for a certain time of day. We also have a new view inside of Scheduled. So as you can see, it says rest of September, October, November. So you can see all of your scheduled reminders into the future. And also for all of your lists inside of Reminders, you now have the option to pin a list to the top. And we also have some nice updates inside of Safari as well. So we have per website settings. So I'm here on Apple's website. Now, if I wanted Apple's website to always launch to the reader mode, for example, all I have to do is click this little reader icon and then click on website settings. And then it makes sure that use reader automatically is turned on. And that way, every time I go to apple.com, it'll launch the reader mode, but it won't do it for all websites, only apple.com. And also in Safari, when you are using a tab group, you can now choose to share a tab group for collaborative work in iOS 16. And we also have an all new feature inside of Focus called Focus Filters. So Focus Filters allows you to filter certain content depending on what focus mode you're in. So let me show you what this means. So I'm gonna choose Do Not Disturb as the focus I wanna add a filter to. And at the bottom, I can click on add a filter. And you can see you can filter various things such as mail, messages, Safari tab groups, and even calendar events. So let's go ahead and set up a filter for this video. So I'm gonna click on mail, and I only wanna see emails from my personal Gmail, so I'll click on add. And now that is set up, so as soon as I go into Control Center and I turn on do not disturb, let's go ahead and open up mail now, and you'll see that it's going to be hiding certain emails, and it's gonna say filtered by focus. So this is really good if you wanna turn on a focus mode when you're at work, that way you only see your work emails. This is going to be really handy for a lot of people. So we also have some drastic changes to Spotlight Search, and I am using Spotlight Search so much more on my iPhone thanks to all of these great changes in iOS 16. So on top of being able to access Spotlight just by tapping on the pill at the bottom, we also can now launch apps way quicker inside of Spotlight. So if I wanna open weather, for example, all I have to do is start typing weather, and as you can see, it fills it in right there and says open. Now to open it, all I have to do is click on go, and it'll open weather just like that. This is the fastest way to launch any app on your iPhone, and honestly, this is probably the main way I launch all of my apps on my iPhone. And Spotlight Search is also really smart as well and can recommend certain actions that you may wanna do. So say for example, I wanna know the name of a song that's playing and I wanna Shazam it. All I have to do is search for Shazam. And as you can see, I have a shortcut right here to start Shazamming that song. So all I have to do is tap on that right there and now it's listening for a song. It also works for things like a timer inside the clock app. So if I search for timer, you see I have a quick shortcut right here to start a timer. All I have to do is click on it just like that. 
And also inside of Spotlight Search, you're gonna notice that image searching is a lot better and it's also gonna search more applications for you. So I search for a tree here and on top of searching for knowledge and various things on the web, it's also gonna search my emails, it's gonna search my photos, and I also have the option to search all of these apps as well for images. So here's another really great feature inside of photos that I forgot to mention earlier. You can now select a subject out of a photo simply by pressing and holding on it. And the iPhone is smart enough to cut out the edges perfectly most times. So here I have a photo of a building. All I have to do is press and hold on it. And as you can see, it selects it just like that. I can click on copy or share, and I can also drag and drop this image as it is. So I'll do this again, I'll press and hold on it and I'll move my thumb at the same time. And as you can see, I've now picked up the photo of this building and I can now drag it, for example, into messages and I can send away just that cutout of that image inside an iMessage thread. So now let's talk about what's new in weather as Apple has completely redesigned the weather app in iOS 16 and they have also added a weather app to the iPad in iPad OS 16, which is a nice change as well. So first up, as you can see, we have a redesigned view of all of our cities. And when we open up a city and then close it, we have a pretty nice animation right there, as you can see. And we also have some new notification settings as well. So if we click on the menu icon at the top and then click on notifications, you can see we can get severe weather and also next hour precipitation alerts. So this is because Apple ended up purchasing a weather application that was previously exclusive to Android phones and now they have brought the features of that weather app to iOS. So you're able to get next hour alerts for rain and also severe weather coming to your city. And when you're viewing a city, you can also see way more detail. So first up, you can now click on a specific day to see more about the forecast for that day. So finally, you can actually see more detail about an upcoming day's weather. And also, if you scroll to the bottom, you have way more cards and all of these are interactable. So say for example, I wanna click on sunset, you can see way more data. You get a much better graph showing where the sun is in the sky. You also get data such as first light, sunrise, sunset, and probably one of my favorite sets of data inside weather is it shows the averages of sunrise and sunset times across all 12 months. And as you can see, all of these cards inside the weather app are interactable. So you can tap on each one and see much more info, usually in a nice graphic like this. So the weather app is overall way better in iOS 16 with way more information available to you. So to wrap up here at the end, we're gonna do some rapid fire new features as well. So Face ID now works in landscape mode for new iPhones. So I believe it's only for the iPhone 13 and 14. So as you can see, my iPhone is in landscape mode. I can position my face in the frame and it's able to authenticate with Face ID even when it's tilted in landscape. Inside of Wi-Fi settings, if you click where it says password, it's gonna scan for Face ID and then it's gonna show the Wi-Fi password. So this is much better than what they had on iOS 15 where you could only share the Wi-Fi password. Now you can click on it, authenticate with Face ID and actually see what the Wi-Fi password is. And we also have an all new widget available now in iOS 16. So inside of the widget gallery, as you can see right here, we now have a widget available for the contacts app. And we also have some really nice new features when taking a screenshot. So I'll go ahead and take a screenshot here on my iPhone. The first change is if you press and hold on the screenshot, you now have the option to rename it. So as you can see there, I can click where it says rename and I can change the name of that screenshot. And another really great feature that I'm going to use a ton is you now have the option to copy and delete a screenshot. So if I take one right here and then click on done, you can see we have an option to delete it and also copy and delete. So if I click on this, it's going to delete it, but it's also going to copy it to my clipboard so I can paste it somewhere else. Inside the Files app, we now have the option to show file extensions. So if we click on the menu icon and then click on view options, we can turn on show all extensions. And now as you can see, all of these images now end in .jpg. And also in files, as you can see on the bottom row, there is now a shared section down here. And also inside the Contacts app, a very welcome change. If you press and hold on a contact, you now have the option to delete it right here. And the Stocks app now supports a separate list apart from the default My Symbols list. So I have created a separate list called My Holdings, which I can switch to right here. And finally, Control Center now has a new privacy history view. So I recently used my camera and that used the microphone, the camera, and my location. And as you can see, if I click here, I'm able to see a history of what has been used on my iPhone. 
And finally, how could I forget, probably the most popular tiny feature in iOS 16 is you're now able to view your battery percentage in the status bar without going into control center. Now this is supported on all iOS 16 devices except the iPhone 10R, 11, 12 mini, and 13 mini. And as you can see here, I'm using a 13 mini, so I can't show you, but here is a screenshot to show you what that looks like. So that is iOS 16. That was a very long video, but Apple did make a ton of awesome enhancements to iOS 16, and they included a bunch of new useful features that I'm gonna use every single day. So I'd say my favorite three features in iOS 16 would have to be the redesigned lock screen, which includes the really cool new wallpapers that animate. Also, the haptic keyboard is awesome. It just makes typing on my iPhone so much better and also all of the improvements to Spotlight Search, including the option to launch Spotlight just by tapping on the bottom like that. So I want you guys to head down to the comments and tell me what is your favorite feature in iOS 16. If you guys found this video interesting or helpful, make sure to drop a like on it. My name is Michael with IDB. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.